Morning, lovely viewer. Well, I apologize for the wind if you if you hear anything, but I've just smelt something today and um, I wanted to talk to you about it. First of all, I have to say that the fragrance from the roses in my garden, it is back. It is back and I am so pleased. But if you've ever wondered if you if you would buy a lightly fragrant rose, I know that many people they the fragrance is the most important thing and they wouldn't they wouldn't think of getting a, a lightly fragrant rose. But I have just smelt something this morning and it is absolutely fantastic. And I'm talking to you about Bliss Parfuma. Bliss Parfuma, she's only a baby. I planted her, I planted her this year and she hasn't grown much. And this rose, it is going slightly over a lovely rose, but I've just smelt her this morning and she has got a fantastic fragrance. Yes, it's light, it is, it is a light fragrance. But I think it's possible, I think it's possible to, to have that sort of attractiveness about a fragrance and have it light. And let me explain, Arthur Bell, his fragrance is about as subtle as a brick going through a window. That powerful, that lovely, powerful fragrance. If it was an aftershave, it would be Old Spice or Brute, High Karate, something like that, very unsubtle. Oscar Bell, I've spoken about before, her fragrance. She is more your Chanel number no. five, Coco Chanel. The air of sort of sophistication and a fragrance that I love. But my favorite fragrance on a lady is actually White Musk. And it might not be as powerful, it might not be as long lasting, but White Musk is my favorite on a lady. So if you're thinking of getting Bliss Parfumer and you're put off by that, that light fragrant tag, um, I wouldn't worry, I really wouldn't worry too much because for me at least, that is a fantastic um, fragrance that it's, it's letting off. This is a rose. I'm not gonna be able to walk past this without, without taking a, a whiff. She's only a baby, she's growing very slowly by the looks of it. I'm not sure she will have much size to her. But that is a fantastic fragrance for light fragrance. And I didn't think that was possible. But I've tried to um, I've tried to wrap that up as best I could. Shall we do a tour? I, this was meant to be a quick video on just those, on just that Bliss Parfumer. But you know what? We're going to do something because Rose Laguna. I'm going to show you the things that are starting to have changed since the the last video that I've done. Rose Laguna has started to flower, just coming to flower. You can see the flowers here. It's like a scarlet sort of red. It's coming for, for me. Stamen's in the middle. Now, despite the fragrance being back in my garden, Rose Laguna has, has no fragrance, but she has some fantastic flowers. I know that. Quite small in, in size. They're not large flowers. But that is all in shade down there, and you can see the the new growth that's coming up, strong, thick growth coming up all around the back there as well. And that's all in the shade, but there's, it's in the sun up here. And I'm hoping, the, the hope is that she's gonna grow, she's gonna grow into this tree. Now, there are not that many buds on this, on this rose, I have to say, but sometimes that first year, you don't get any flowers at all in the first year with climbers. So next year, hopefully will be better, but I wanted to, to film these, flowers just while just while they were here now the perfumer collection i'm waiting just a bit longer before i do my sort of progress report on these i just need a few more weeks but they are starting to to come through i'll do my first impressions on on those and these are probably as as good as they're going to look the height of their their first sort of flush and rose amadeus is certainly it's certainly looking mighty fine. This is probably as, as good as, as he will look. In fact, there, there are there are many buds still still waiting to come through. But you can see here, magnificent flowers. And these flowers, they they must last, getting on for three weeks. They must last, they last for an eternity. The same as my perfumer collection. They seem to be very long lasting 
flowers, but I, I will do a first impressions of those. I just need a bit more time. And we've got another one come through here. We've got another one come through here. I believe this one is Timeless Charisma. This is a hybrid tea rose, and this is the first roses that have come through. Nice, nice sort of size. Lovely colour, that sort of purple colour, and it's got a, it's got a, for me, a medium fragrance. And like I say, the fragrance, it is, it is back in my garden now. I'm so happy with that. I put it down to low overnight temperatures, something that hasn't happened me, to me before in previous years. You know, <clears throat> last week we had fine weather during the day. It could be, it could have been blue skies, no rain, but there were many of my roses. It just had no fragrance. Roses that I was expecting. In fact, the perfumer collection, I think they all, they all took a hit with regards to their fragrance and it could have been blue skies. It was very confusing for me, but I think that's what it was. It was lower overnight temperatures. It zapped the, um, the fragrance from, from many of my roses and the same happened. And the same happened when I went to David Austin's. There was many big name, big gun, big hitting sort of roses. The ex expectation was there that they would be, you know, this, this huge sort of fragrance and it, it was something that just didn't happen for me from many of the of the roses and i think it was down to that so there was a guy i think his name's improved sheffield he did make a comment on that david austin video and he said that he you know he just assumed that, that that's what people knew people knew that no I, I didn't know that i didn't know that um i thought if it was dry if, it, if the air was still if it was sunny if it was Blue skies, you would you would get the, the fragrance. Certainly that's what happened with me last year and in previous years. But that is, a, maybe it was a phenomenon, I don't know. But this is Paul's Himalayan musk and you can see the new growth coming up here. Very happy with that. This is probably at its height, Paul's Himalayan musk. There are some buds still to come through, but some are starting to go over as well. Paul's Himalayan musk and I get a, I think quantity of flowers when I walk through here, I do get a, a nice a nice waft. But here's another one. You know what, I was only gonna show you that this perfumer. This is another one, it's it's Rose Uterson, and you can see it in flower now. Yes, we need to take the we need to take the flags down. Now this one is is lightly fragranted. There is some fragrance to it, so it's it's not as if there is no fragrance. But this is starting to do well. This really has started to do well. There's a, a wasp type thing that I disturbed there that I, I didn't want to. But there's the flowers, Rose Uterson. Now this rose is um, planted bare root. Bare root in the, in the winter. And looking on YouTube, it's, it's a rose that's very popular in mainland Europe. And I believe popular in Russia as well. A very heavy flower very heavy flower indeed and that's why I that's why I got it and you can see that she certainly looks like she's going to be a, a strong flower and there's new growth there's new growth that's coming up there and this is Rose Westerland I'm not sure if this was in flower when you saw it last time it's got a lovely sort of it starts off a, a more of an orange color even tinges of, of red as you can see on the buds and it opens up to this sort of salmon pink peachy sort of um color in the middle stamens and a nice a nice medium fragrance climbing rose and this is going to climb hopefully all the way up here but there's there's more flowering to come from this from this first flush so there's that now many people ask me about this rose here brother cadfall I'd have to say that I'm starting to get a bit worried <laughs> about the, some of these monster canes that are, that are coming up. I mean, look at, look how high that is. I know it's in a pot, but it's um, it's almost up to my neck, almost neck height, this one cane here. And we do get a fair amount of wind here, but this this is a rose. It was, um, it kind of was a little bit sluggish when I first planted it. And I think that was to do with the aphids. We had an aphid infestation 
um, and I have in previous years just left them and, and let the wildlife take care of them. But this year, I think it was particularly bad and it zapped a lot of the energy out as it as it was starting to as it was starting to to grow um yeah it's not flowered yet but we're we're waiting to see we're waiting to see but you may see that i have been a very very naughty boy in fact we'll talk about this first of all this is summer romance there's a few out the front i think you normally only ever see one but this one here it gets sun from about 2 p.m until about 8 p.m because the sun, when it goes over the top of the house, at the moment, this time of year in June, it sets over there. So I think it's fair to say that uh, it, the height of the sort of daylight hours, this gets, gets sun from about 2 p.m. until about eight. It is just around the, the corner a little bit as the sun goes down, but it's got new growth coming up, not doing as well as the ones out the front that have the, the full morning sun, but it's still doing well. and. Uh, and a fantastic fragrance. Very nice. 11 minutes, right. Yeah, I think you knew, many of you knew that I was gonna, I was gonna get these, The Poet's Wife. Now, when I went to David Austin's, I've already, I've already spoken. It was, a, I think it was a time of year. The weather, it was not great for roses. You know, when you have those cold overnight temperatures and your roses are in flower. The fragrance for many of the roses not all of them but for many of the roses it, it does get diluted or even stolen completely but this was a rose that was at david austin's and um there were many of them planted throughout the uh his headquarters his garden center and they all seemed to be doing so well on that particular day they were doing fantastically well and on that particular day for me the poet's wife it was by far the um the most outstanding yellow rose the pilgrim and tottering by gently they done well but this was the favorite for me and one of my favorites overall and this was another one of my favorites emily bronte or emily bronte i'm not sure of the pronunciation there focus it's not in flower at the moment very similar to I guess Elizabeth, and maybe a little bit like Eustacia Vi, but certainly that um, apple blossom sort of look, which I'm, I'm growing, it's growing on me, I have to say. And this is a rose, again, it was the same thing when I went to David Austin's, many of these planted throughout the garden, and they all seem to be doing so well. This one, it gets recommended for health, and it gets recommended for fragrance, and, um, so yeah, certainly when I was at David Austin's, whilst there were many other big hitting roses that for whatever reason, the weather, atmospherics or whatever, zapped their, their fragrance, this was shining as was the, the poet's wife. And that was for me on that, on that particular day. So we've got two new additions. Let me just tell you how high this one grows. It says three and a half feet to three and a half feet is what it says on the, on the tin but we will have to see, but I'm hoping to get both of these in the ground, but I will, I'll keep you updated with regards to that. And I might as well do one last thing. And this is James Galway. <laughs> I do like that fragrance. I, it's not, it's not a hugely powerful fragrance, but, but sometimes it's like that. You know, your favorite fragrances haven't got to be the strongest. And I think I, I, I tried to sum that up in the, the high karate brute sort of aftershave manner. I'm more of a, a white musk man that you get from the body shop. It may not be as long lasting, but it's, it's, it's my favorite. But James Galway planted, planted this year and she's doing well. And the other thing that's doing well is I think my star jasmine is gonna flower, which if that does, I will be, I will be very, very happy with indeed and let's just have you can't walk past this rose without giving it a whiff look at that just an unusual unlike anything else I've got Boscobel yeah that's that's your that's your Coco Chanel that's your little bit of sophistication there that is a, a fragrance I wish I could break it down 
I wish I could, but I, I don't. You know, when it comes to rose fragrance, imagine the sweetie game. <clears throat> imagine the sweetie game. In fact, let's go and have a look at Pompanella. The sweetie game, you know where you get a packet of sweets, fruit lozenges, fruit pastels, or something like that. Excuse that, my, <laughs> my, my alarm went off. Yeah, the sweetie game. You have a packet of sweets, opal fruits, fruit pastels, something like that, and you put one in your mouth without trying to, without seeing what color it was that you put in your mouth and you're sucking on it and you're trying to guess the sweetie game. Now there are people, everyone says they are good at the sweetie game. Um, and they say they're good at the sweetie game until you see them play it. And they're telling you, they're giving you an undertone of citrus. You know, this one's definitely a yellow sweet. And they're talking about this lemon thing that they're, they're absolutely sure, absolutely sure that this is a, a yellow sweet they've got in their mouth. And then you see them take it out and of course it's red. Well, I know that I'm no good at the sweetie game. <laughs> I know for a fact that I'm no good at the sweetie game. So I don't, um, I don't even try. I don't even try to, and to be fair, I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone who is good at the sweetie game. I really don't. Now I'm assuming there are people out there who are very good at it. There must be, but I know that it's, it's not something I'm particularly good at, but that doesn't mean that I don't like sweets. I taste sweets just as well as, as anyone else so happy with this rose sweet honey so so happy with it now it has we have had a couple of breakages here i have had to try and support it because unfortunately our dog he does like to he does like to run into it brush into it but sweet honey let's see now we've got fragrance back you know what this would be a miracle i know it's not going to happen but if i put my nose to this now <laughs> no no, there's no fragrance. Almost close, but no cigar. Yeah, that would have been that would have been Nirvana, wouldn't it? Right, lovely viewer. I'm gonna leave you with I'm gonna leave you with Gertrude, I think. See, this is another rose. This rose does not care about atmospherics, weather conditions, cold, cloud, too hot. Does not worry about any of those things. This is always gonna give you that lovely strong fragrance right lovely viewer i hope you have a lovely day